You can also listen to recordings of sounds you made in your sleep. If you're having a noisy night, like Jigglypuff with its singing sleep, then you'll know it. One of the recent revelations from the FTC Microsoft trial was this headline that with regards to machine games, Indiana Jones, the PlayStation version was removed from their contract with Disney after ZeniMax was purchased by Microsoft. And you know, it's the kind of story you hear and shrug your shoulders and say, yeah, okay, that's to be expected and fine. The interesting part of that story the revelation to me was remembering that that game existed. And then I forgot about it again. But then I remembered it again when just last weekend, this dumb movie bombed at the box office. It's one of Disney's most expensive movies they've ever made. And it's just this Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's just this movie people generally just don't care about. More people in this world cared about Transformers and the Rise of the Beasts. And of course that makes us all wonder, what does this mean for that video game they announced two years ago? If you don't happen to remember what that game was, this is all they showed. We're panning over a boring old desk and then there's a hat and a whip. Now we know who this game is about. It belongs to this very specific club of untitled licensed games that right now we've only seen CG teasers for. There's actually a lot of these. We're going to talk about them tonight, and I'm going to put them all on this chart. The x-axis is strength of license, and then the y-axis is likelihood it will be good. So just so we all understand how this works, let's use Spider-Man 2. We're talking about one of the most recognized fictional characters on the planet. We're talking about Insomniac. Maximum license strength, absurdly high goodness chance. So you get that. Also consider the recently announced The Grinch Christmas Adventures. That's a mid-tier license with an extremely low chance of being good. So that would land around here. So now that we're all on the same page on how that chart works, let's get back to Indiana Jones and its strength as a license. Now, while the world has stopped caring about Indiana Jones, I think gamers still love him. Gamers are a nostalgic, cowardly lot. They just love shit like this. But unlike every other license we're about to plop onto my graph tonight, Indiana Jones has only ever been successfully portrayed by one human being with apologies to whoever this is. I'm thinking day one, working on this game. Day one, when you're just, you have the whiteboard out and you're scrawling out your ideas. One of the first things you have to have sorted out is are we gonna do Harrison Ford? Are we gonna do likeness and an impression? Or are we gonna go in a whole different way? Because you have to decide that immediately. What do you do? Because here's the thing with Indiana Jones, not only has he ever only been portrayed by Harrison Ford, but like that's all there is. He's carried by Harrison Ford and John Williams. Without those two people, the, the character is nothing. He's a hat and a whip. He's scared of snakes. Canonically, he likes to date underage girls. Like, this guy sucks. The game will tell a wholly original standalone tale set at the height of the career of the famed adventurer. So hopefully this game is just a different multiverse person you know if you try to do harrison ford people will only hate it so when we come to our chart here strength of license i think indiana jones is more of a trap than it appears to be you know much like the grinch this franchise isn't as much about its world and its cast as it is about its one star and the grinch at least has max machine games wolfenstein games two out of three of those great 
I've never really understood what that third one's deal is. It's hard to fully imagine this team making a a, a raiding tombs game, you know, swinging from vines. But uh, you know, anybody can make any game. Like you put your skill points into whip damage. I don't know where they're going. It might be good. Let's put it right here. Monolith Productions Wonder Woman. Here's my biggest hope with this. My hope is that Wonder Woman in this video game doesn't have a boss, doesn't have a commander. Nobody is telling Wonder Woman what to do. And maybe I, this is probably just really because I've played through that Pikmin 4 demo, but it's just there's too many games I feel like where it's like, I'm only doing what I am told to do. And in the case of a superhero, you're not a hero if you're not making any decisions, right? The act, like, it's not just about having a lot of power. It's about using it in ways that most people wouldn't. And so, you know, I just, I hope that Wonder Woman is allowed to lasso whatever she wants to lasso. She can get to the main story quest whenever she feels like it, if she feels like it. So high license strength. Wonder Woman is famous. And I think this is a fairly high chance of being good if Wonder Woman gets to do what she wants. So the game goes here. IO Interactive's 007 game. So James Bond is in a weird spot right now because we're between actors. Daniel Craig Dunn, who's going to be next? All right, look, I'm about to spoil No Time to Die. I'm about to spoil it. If you're concerned about that movie's ending from 2021, if you intend to see that at some point, pause me now and go watch it and then come back after. No Time to Die ends with James Bond dying. He dies. He blows up. We've seen James Bond survive thousands of deadly traps, but this is the one that he just, he can't, he blows up. But the end of the movie, the final lines of the movie, is James Bond's girlfriend and daughter riding in a car together. I remember it being a convertible. I'm not sure if it's a convertible. The mom looks to her daughter and says, let me tell you the story of a man. His name was Bond. James Bond. Roll credits. That's how that movie fucking ends. One of the, just one of the dumbest possible ways to end this Daniel Craig saga. Yes, but it also kind of cheapens all the movies that came before and all of the ones that will come after. Even playing this video game, we'll have to wonder, is this just some story a mom is telling her daughter in a convertible ride? I'm going to think it. Fortunately, at least this will be a story about a young rookie, James Bond, which is fun because he can be a little sloppy. You know, IO Interactive's other game, Hitman 3. In all of the trailers, you have Agent 47 being this smooth professional assassin. But the reason I actually love that game is how sloppy it allows you to be. So license strength, I know James Bond is known around the world, but we've had plenty of James Bond games. But however, I see this having a very high chance of being good. This is a fun studio and license match. Boop. We got the Skydance New Media Black Panther Captain America game. I realize it seems like I bring this game up every week now, but it's, it's definitely a curiosity to me because of... Amy Hedig. It's going to be one of the first games in a long time that Amy Hedig is you know, responsible for. She's producing and writing on this one. And if you're like, who's Amy Hedig? Like, look, look at the career she had. Look at how she just killed it up until the Uncharted 4 creative differences situation happened. Didn't know that she wrote on Battlefield Hardline. And then there's, there's a canceled Star Wars game that happened. Here we have Amy Hedig writing and producing Captain America and Black Panther, this simply can't be canceled. Strength of license is high. Black Panther and Captain America are cool superheroes. It'll be great to see them working together. Probability of quality 
it will be this studio's first game. But here's the thing. It's a narrative-driven blockbuster action-adventure game. Those never turn out bad. So it goes here. Motive Studios Iron Man. Sometimes I forget about a game until I'm writing a script. This Iron Man game is clearly one of those. Now this one is cheating a little bit because there's no CG trailer, but just this one image. But hey, we'll put it on the chart too. Going all the way back to Iron Man's first ever comic. All the way to today, that span of time. His best quality is Robert Downey Jr. So it's not like Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones where it's like that's the only version of him. But what I am saying is that the best part of Iron Man is Robert Downey Jr. So this is not going to be that Iron Man. It's not going to be the, the best possible Iron Man. It will be one of the Iron Mans that's less good. The license strength of Iron Man absolutely has to be lower than the combination of Black Panther and Captain America. We'll put it around here. And, you know, this is a Kyle being picky thing. I think Iron Man works best when he's chunky, when he's weighty, when he is thick. When I see Iron Man, I want him to be 90s Iron Man. He looks like a man who's in a suit of armor that is impenetrable, as opposed to like a man who is made out of iron and skinny. And looking at this image here, he's looking a little thin. This would be closer to what I'm looking for. But I should say, I do think Iron Man as a superhero does work well as a video game character. And that like, think about just like upgrading your suit and abilities. That's something the character Iron Man would actually do. You know, cooldowns for your special abilities make sense for Iron Man. He lends himself to being a video game character pretty well. And it's easy to forget that the Dead Space remake came out this year and it's good because shortly after it came out was Resident Evil 4, and it just robbed the spotlight. But Motive has proven themselves. Let's stick this one right here. Star Wars Eclipse I was also forced to remember. Announced way too early, licensed game with CG teaser. However, it does have a title for some reason, so it doesn't qualify. And I guess it's worth noting... Whenever you talk about these tr these games that are announced way too early and these trailers that don't show anything, it's always like, yeah, uh, half of the purpose is drumming up hype, building anticipation. But I guess also the other half, or maybe the primary reason for some of these is to recruit, is to send out the message to talent, hey, come work for us. You scroll down and they're like, join the team. By the way, IO Interactive. Excellent cursor effect. Nobody does these anymore. I really appreciate this. And that's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. So despite being born in the 80s, you could probably pick this up from watching this video. I'm not an Indiana Jones guy. And I think a big part of that is like, I didn't have the setup. I feel like what a lot of people who love Indiana Jones had this buildup, had, had, you know, just a parent who's like, it's time, time to watch Indiana Jones. You know, let's dim the lights. Let's all get on the couch together. And now Indiana Jones, you know, I feel like, I feel like if you have that, you have that wide eyed Spielbergian enthusiasm for this franchise. Maybe that's what you need. I had never seen Indiana Jones as a child. My first exposure to Indiana Jones and his iconic rolling boulder is, of course, the opening to Muppet Babies. Actually, also the first time I'd ever seen Star Wars is the opening to Muppet Babies. And it makes me think of how, like, being a kid, a big part of watching anything, even watching cartoons made for kids, is you just have to, like, let a lot of references fly by. You know, I feel like the writers are like, the kids, they'll never pick up on this one. It'll be over their heads. It's like, I get it. There's a, This is a reference to something that I just haven't seen yet. You get that it's a reference being made, and you just kind of put a flag on it. I'll understand it more later. Like, I saw Doug being Indiana Jones. 
Doug funny is like race Canyon. So of course, if I see Doug idolizing Indiana Jones, I'm not going to think Indiana Jones is cool. Doug also had like a, a James Bond thing. And it's like, Doug, what are you doing, man? We don't know who James Bond is. We're kids. The first James Bond movie I ever saw was Goldeneye. But before I saw Goldeneye, I saw this. What is he like? What is he doing with his legs? Get your knee off Princess Jasmine, James Bond. 